Let's learn a little bit about GMOs. Show me what your body can do. Hi, this is Chavanka from JavankaCRS.com. You've heard all the hoopla about GMOs and you think they are not such great news for you, but really, do you know what they're really all about and why there's all this crazy back and forth where there's like big, large companies and special interest groups all having spent uh, tens of millions of dollars on either side of the argument to get you to agree with them. But what are these GMOs all about? I've decided to do a lot of research on this issue and answer here the top 10 questions people keep asking about this particular issue. And here they are. What the heck are GMOs? You may have seen a number of terms for this same thing. Genetically modified organisms, GMOs, GM, genetically engineered, biotech, but they all essentially mean the same thing. GMOs are plants or organisms where their genes have been altered to include DNA from another plant, germ, or even another chemical. So it is essentially humans creating new organisms that do not exist in nature in a laboratory by artificial means. What's the big deal about creating a new life in a lab? By altering or really denaturing a natural organism, a bunch of companies have begun to actually trademark crops or foods. In other words, they're trademarking life. Why would anyone want to genetically modify foods in the first place? There's a lot of companies out there that argue that GMOs can reduce the cost for farmers and for the consumers, therefore, and can increase the amount of crops that they produce and use less herbicide. Oh, that sounds great. Is that true? I don't think so. For example, in India, 100% of the GMO cotton crops completely failed, and GMO soy fields decreased by 20% compared to non-GMO soy. Reduction of cost to farmers? Not really. There's this new technology that's creating seeds that self-destruct. The seeds happen to be sterile, which means that farmers must buy them again and again each year instead of using the seeds that they harvest from the plants, from the mother plant on the following year, which is the way nature intended. And by the way, this means bigger profits for the food companies that are patenting these GMO seeds and less money in the farmer's pocket. Plus, sterile seeds? Wouldn't that threaten our entire food supply if we cannot use the seeds from, from the mother plant to create new crops next season? And is it really a reduction in the use of pesticide? Well, the USDA data shows that GMO crops increased pesticide use by 50 million pounds between 1996 and 2003 in the US alone. Why isn't the government regulating this? Oh, there are actually laws in the books today that mandate food labeling when, but only when there is a substantial difference in the nutritional or safety characteristic of that new food. The problem is that the FDA does not consider the current method of genetically modifying food enough to create that said substantial difference. And companies may voluntarily label foods without genetic modification and food labeled USDA organic are supposed to be produced without genetic modification. So why not labeling and be done with it? Well, Monsanto and other companies don't want to and are spending crazy amounts of money supporting lawmakers and special interest groups that will help them maintain the status quo. In their website, Monsanto explains, and I quote, we oppose current initiatives to mandate labeling of ingredients developed from GM seeds in the absence of any demonstrated risks. Such mandatory labeling could imply that food products containing these ingredients are somehow inferior to their conventional or organic counterparts. The way I see it, if they're so afraid that you and I may see the GMO label and discriminate against their product and stop buying them, then maybe there's some reason behind it. They claim those are perfectly normal and safe, right? And there's plenty of people out there that don't think GMOs are a problem. Why not allowing those who want to know make a choice and those who don't give a crap keep buying the products with GMO. Makes you wonder, right? So which are the products that are GMO? Products that are almost entirely GMO include soy, sugar, coin, and vegetable oil. Buy those organic or better yet, stay away from them altogether. That's it? Well, that's the thing. We just don't know. Products that may contain GMO, but we're not 
quite sure just yet include papayas, wheat, flax seeds, rice, potatoes, tomatoes, bananas, in other words, the most popular foods out there. Plus, if you eat animal flesh, you are consuming GMOs for sure, since these animals are fed with cornmeal and all kinds of other ingredients that are known to include GMOs. How do I avoid this altogether? Until Congress or state governments enact mandatory labeling laws in the United States, you are left kind of with very few options. Buy organic, buy food certified as non-GMO project verified, and stay away from processed, boxed, and foods with artificial ingredients as they are believed to include GMO. Check out the video interview with Gary Jarowski done by my friend Emily from Bite Size Vegan. The link of the video will be on the screen and on the description page. So what's your opinion on this controversial issue? Leave a comment below and let me know. If you have any questions, write them down and I'll answer them right on the comments or maybe on another video. Share this video with all of your friends because we are all going to be affected by this in one way or another. And subscribe for more tips and a jolt of motivation for your sexy, healthy, and beautiful life. See you soon. Get free detox, weight loss, healthy living tips, and inspirational messages galore when you subscribe to the Weekly Jolt. Just click the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Show me what your body can